Good morning to everybody again. It's a, we're starting a spring series of Piper's Persuasion interviews with a, a well-known uh, figure from the College of Piping. Uh, Dougald McNeil. Dougald is going to tell us a bit about uh, the history of the College of Piping and uh, after that we'll uh, maybe have a conversation about the Peabrook Society and other subjects as they crop up during the conversation. So just sit back and enjoy this. We're, in the ambience here it's uh, the main uh, sort of foyer or whatever of the College of Piping. And we have the famous mural in the background that you've seen in previous interviews of uh, Robert Wallace, etc. Where did you start your piping? What type age? Well, and that was just the beginning of the war, the war was on. And I was very keen to learn how to play the pipes. And I eventually got a practice chanter and Logan's tutor which I didn't find all that uh, useful. Mm -hmm. Anyway, the, we, I was part of quite a big family <coughs> and the uh, older ones in the family were going all to senior schools elsewhere, Roman, everywhere else. And there were still three of us, so it was a bit expensive and awkward staying in Ardishik. So we moved to Glasgow, mm -hmm. not far from here. And uh, that was quite uh, a change with uh, the blackout on and tram cars and everything. Anyway, uh, so I went to school in, in Glasgow, in Heinland School. Heinland School, was it? Incidentally, yeah. that's the same school that Seamus McNeil went to. Yes. Uh -huh. Now, this was during the war, and it was very interesting because it was a very big school. It had a junior school right from starting five years old right up to the end and the headmaster was a chap Hutchison and he was alone in his room with a secretary and the deputy head was the head science teacher and there was no other staff. It's an amazing and it was one of the biggest schools in the United Kingdom then because he was also the headmaster of Victoria Drive School. So he had two schools to look after, right? It, well, three, the primary, which are separate yeah. building, uh -huh. the new Highland School, which you'll see in uh -huh. Highland Road, and Victoria Drive, which is a, an older school. Yeah. And uh, so it was quite an amazing. Anyway, was it, is this the early part of the war, 1940? 42. 42, yeah. <clears throat> so I came and I was in, into the second year there. Anyway, my mother heard of this uh, evening class. Mm -hmm. uh, for piping. So I, along I went and it was in a basement just where the central police station is now in Pitt Street, mm -hmm. 181 Pitt Street and it was down in the basement and it was a dank, especially in the winter, dank, cold and un, oh, not very nice place. Uh -huh. But uh, the two people who were running that school were Tommy Pearson and Seamus McNeil. Mm -hmm. And they were, Seamus McNeil was lecturing in the University in Physics. Tommy Pearson was a pretty clever backroom boy in the hospitals. He did histology, which is quite a complicated thing. And uh, they were both keen on youth hostels and uh -huh. going away for the weekends. And <coughs> they were both very good players and they had been in the 139 Boys Brigade company which had been taught by Seamus's uncle, Blind Archie McNeil. I remember Archie. And uh, there was a great number of good pipers from that. We Don McLean, for example, mm -hmm. and others. Anyway, <coughs> they used to take their pipes occasionally at the weekend to the youth hostels to play at the Cayleys and whatnot. And some of the, the other fellows said, look, how about teaching us how to play? So they said, okay, we'll, we'll have a look at that. And they got this uh, into this basement for one night a week, Wednesday night. And uh, that's what uh, we'd heard of when we came to Glasgow. So along I went and it was, uh, it was wonderful because these two uh, people 
Tommy Pearson and Seamus McNeil, they could explain everything extremely well. And so I, I, I thought it was wonderful because here was me getting top class tuition. Did they have the College of Piping tutor at that no, time? No, was no, that no, later no. On? That came a good bit later so on. So what, what, what uh, they just, Well, they just used the same system that Archie, Blind Archie had used, uh -huh. which was very, very straightforward and it, pretty well what the tutor does. You know, you learn to play yes. the scale with straight fingers and whatnot, and then you... But you had no book as such at no, that no, particular time. No, well, you did have, you had, you, you had to get a little manuscript book. And write everything out. And write everything out. And yeah. also, you also had to have a notebook, mm -hmm. which they filled in the dates and blah, 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 what you've done wrong or right or carry on. And that was their method, and it was excellent. Good. And then, the, about uh, towards the end of the war, it was, I, I thought it was wonderful and there was quite a, a, a support system in parents and whatnot. But uh, When did you actually go into the, the, the bagpipe as such well, that from the be, practice that charter? That probably be about two years later. It was long as that? Oh I because well I, you know, it's quite difficult to get hold of a set of pipes there. Right, it would be because no, uh, no manufacturers at well, that Well, they were, but they weren't doing all that much. Uh -huh. And they, <clears throat> well, it, I, looking back, I don't think it was any disadvantage because playing the pipes, blowing the pipes is a completely different skill. The fingering is a difficult bit. It's almost like relearning again when you pick well, up the big not, instrument. No, you're you? just learning something different. You're learning mm -hmm. how to blow a bagpipe. Yes. But the fingering is there. So how long did you spend on exercises before you went on to a tune? No exercises at all. All you Just did was learn to play wasn't? the scale mm -hmm. and then learn to play, you know, grace notes one note to another and then exactly as it is in the tutor. So uh, you're learning uh, grace notes and doubling movements as you go through the various That's tunes. That's right, yes. So in, in other words, Scott's way, all you need to know is straightforward grace notes and, and the throne, the throne D. D. Correct. And the college at that time was very keen, and I think correctly, on the heavy throw. Mm -hmm. So everyone learned the heavy throw. And, uh, you know, if you heard Alistair Gillis playing, yes. heavy throw. I was quite Roddy McLeod, yes. heavy throw. That's from the college. And uh, anyway, that was one thing, but uh, thereafter it was just uh, so well done.